Hi, I'm Ruth and in this video I'm going to give you some ideas of songs activities you could do using instruments. Often in early year settings people have instruments but they're a bit scared to use them because they're not sure what to do. So I'm going to give you some structured ideas that might help and you can use them in a group or in a one-to-one -one setting. So the first thing I'm going to do is teach you some songs using sticks. Uh, these are called claves. I've got three different colours. Um, you can get your own sticks, cut up some dowling or something. I would say the sound quality is nicer of these. So it just depends what you want them for. For the songs I'm going to teach you, I'm not really doing them for the sound quality. It's more for the fun of doing the stick activity together. And the first one uh, involves listening to the speed of the music. So I'm going to play my guitar. If you don't have a guitar, you could do this setting the rhythm maybe on a drum or something. So maybe I'll show you that after, but I'll do it on the guitar first. And I would say we're going to play at the same time as I play the guitar. So the children are going to tap. And if you've got adults, they can model it while you're playing. Tap your sticks to the rhythm of the music tap your sticks to the rhythm of the music tap your sticks to the rhythm of the music that's what rhythm's all about and then we're going to go faster tap 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 your sticks to the rhythm of the music tap your sticks to the rhythm of the music tap your sticks to the rhythm of the music that's what Faster, tap your six to the rhythm of the music, tap your six to the rhythm of the music, tap your six to the rhythm of the music, that's what rhythm's all about. And then really, really fast, tap your six to the rhythm of the music, tap your six to the rhythm of the music, tap your six to the rhythm of the music, that's what rhythm's all about. And stop! And you'll notice I use my hand to say stop, I use the music to stop as well as using my words. Children often love that and they love the excitement of getting faster. I'll just show you on a drum as well how you might lead it. So again, follow my beat. Tap your sticks to the rhythm of the music. Tap your sticks and so on. So I'm using a different instrument to stick so that the children who are using an auditory cue will be able to hear that that's different from everybody else playing their sticks. And then I'm just going to teach you two other songs with sticks. So the next one is called Tap Tappity. And I would just say, if you're handing out sticks and you've got a child who you know struggles with having two different colours, make sure they get two the same colour. It just helps, particularly if you're in a big group, um, for there not to be a fuss and, and ruin the flow later. So this one. Tap, tappity, tap, tappity, tap, tap, tap. Tap, tappity, tap, tappity, tap, tap, tap. Tap your sticks and wave them in the air. Tap, tappity, tap, tappity, tap, tap, tap. And then I'd let other people choose. So I'm going to give some to Fraser, some to Flo. So what would you like to do? What do you think we should do next, Fraser? Oh, Fraser's saying, can we roll our sticks? Roll, roll a tea, roll, roll a tea, roll, roll, roll. Roll, roll a tea, roll, roll a tea, roll, roll, roll. Roll your sticks and wave them in the air. Roll, roll a tea, roll, roll a tea, roll, roll, roll. And you'll notice I pause on the air. And I'd wait for everybody to see and take the vocal cue as well that we're going to wave now and then go back. Flo, what should we do now? Oh, Flo wants to bang. And again, just a warning, if you're in a room with a hard floor, it is going to be loud. So just maybe sing it slightly quicker and then move on to the next verse quickly. Bang, bang a tea, bang, bang a tea, bang, bang, bang. And so on. You might have roly-poly or someone says oh I want to ride a bike or look I've made the letter T so just go with the flow and I would say again as I have on other videos think about the boundaries and the process beforehand so are 
you likely to have someone who wants to tap the person next to them it might be worth saying in advance we're only going to tap our sticks we don't tap people or can you think of something that is kind and won't hurt anyone to do with your sticks so anticipate those boundary pushing moments a bit and then i'm going to do one more song with sticks today and it's the tune she'll be coming around the mountain can you tap your sticks down low up high if i was with children i'd be standing up and stretching as high as possible but you won't be able to see me so i'll just do it in fact let's do it with flow holding it then you can see so can you tap your sticks up high can you tap your sticks up high can you tap your sticks tap your sticks Tap your sticks up high. Then this is the chorus. Then we'll roll, roll, roll them on the floor. Yes, we'll roll, roll, roll them on the floor. Can you roll, roll, roll them? Roll, roll, roll them. Roll, roll, roll them on the floor. Then the next verse is, can you tap your sticks down low? And I would lie on the floor with the children. So Flo's lying down. Can you tap your sticks down low? Can you tap your sticks down low? And then you do the whole verse and then roll them on the floor again for the chorus. And then at the side, and this is quite difficult for some children to do that and that, but we'll try it. So I'll demonstrate this one. Can you tap your sticks at the side? Then the other side. Can you tap your sticks at the side? And then the other side again for the whole verse. And then last one, behind, which again, for young children, they might need a little bit of help and someone demonstrating how to do it. And each time I sing, roll them on the floor in between. And then the last verse, if I've got a whole bag of sticks and I actually want them put away after this, I would go round singing, can you put, put, put them in the bag? Can you put, put, put them in the bag? And just keep singing it until the whole group has tidied up. And that's the end of my stick activity. So that's three songs with sticks. And then I'm just going to teach you a couple of other things that you might do when doing instrument playing. One of them is my magic gloves. So the gloves are in charge and the instructions are quite simple. When the gloves are up high, again, I'm not going to go out screenshot for you. We play loudly. When they're down here, we play quietly. And when I do that, we stop with just one hand. So I demonstrate it. And I don't move too quickly because it's really hard to go loud, quiet. Some children go like this and you can't follow it. So again, always model how you want it done. And then I would choose someone and say, OK, it's your turn to be in charge now. So I give the gloves to Fraser. Oh, Fraser doesn't really like itchy feelings. So I'm going to say to him, it's OK to just hold them, Fraser. You don't have to put them on. You can still be in charge. And I would say to everyone, OK, everybody, don't look at me. Look at Fraser, because Fraser's in charge now. His gloves are going to tell us how to play our music. And I would pick up an instrument and follow Fraser's lead. And then at the end, Fraser gets to choose. He hands the gloves. Oh, Flo, he's choosing you. Oh, Flo's really shy and she doesn't want a turn today. So I'd say, okay, Flo, let's just pass them on then. If Flo's too shy at the moment to choose, I'd give them back to Fraser and say, Fraser, do you want to choose someone different then? And if you find you've got a pattern where the same people always choose the same people, you can limit the choice. So for example, say to Fraser, who's, you know, we've had five boys chosen so far and no girls have had to turn. So maybe say, okay, Fraser, could you choose a girl to give the gloves to now? Or, you know, you manage it accordingly so that they still make their choice and their choice is valid, but you can steer it slightly. And you can do that with the same instrument. So sometimes I give everybody boom whackers and we're all playing on the floor or tapping them together and the person in charge is controlling the loud or quiet. Or I hand out loads of different instruments. Maybe everybody gets to choose. So, you know, you might have woodblock, chime bars, tambourines, whatever you've got in your resources. This is a great way of controlling the activity. So it doesn't get out of control, but it's quite fun because it can get loud and it can get quiet. 
And I often find children who are quite shy or seem to not like playing instruments will come into their own with this activity because maybe it turned out actually they just don't like loud music but if they're in charge and know that they can keep it quiet or they can make it go loud and then make it go quiet again suddenly they like the activity and I've used it quite a lot with children with additional needs in mainstream schools and again it's given them power in their class they're in charge everybody understands the rules and they love it so it's a great way of encouraging people in different groups. Um, the other thing I sometimes do with instruments is a start and stop. And you can do that, like I said, hold your hand up to say stop. Traffic lights, red is stop, green is go, or just make it so that they just turn it over. People could use their voices to stay, go and stop. And sometimes it's literally ready, steady, go and stop. So ready, steady, go, and we all play, and stop. Sometimes I do it with a song called We All Play Together. We all play together, together, together. We all play together until Ruth says, stop. And then I can say, okay, it's somebody else's turn to say stop now. So at the end, we're going to listen to Fraser and we're going to watch his hand. He's going to use his hand to say stop. And we do it again. And then when Fraser shouts or says stop, then we stop. You can do it with walking around as well. So I'm going to teach you one more song where you walk and then stop. Walk with me, walk with me, walk with me, and then stop. Walk with me, walk with me, walk with me, and then stop. And you could do it where people are walking around playing instruments. So they walk and play, and when they stop, there should be silence. Or you can do it as activities, so jump with me, run with me, hop with me, without the instruments. So two different ways to do that song. And then I'm going to do one more activity. Actually, let me move that guitar out of your way. And this is one about listening. So I'm going to use a bag to hide two instruments. And we're going to see if the children or Frozen Flo can tell me which one I'm playing. And with activities like this, you really want the children to succeed and the young people to succeed. So... Don't gauge it too difficult. I'd start with two very different instruments and I have pictures as well. So that somebody who doesn't know what it's called but they know what they can hear, that helps. So for example, I might say, okay, so I've got some wind chimes and a wood block and I'd play them both as well. So in my bag over here, I've got some wind chimes. So that's wind chimes and that's what they sound like. They're going in the bag. And this is wood block. And that's what they sound like. And I'd hide them both and I'm going to ask Fraser. So I give him the pictures and I'm going to ask him to listen and tell me what I'm playing. I'll do it with the guitar first. Listen carefully to this sound and then I'll play it. Tell me, tell me, what's that sound? And then I'm going to ask Fraser, what do you think that is, Fraser? Oh, Fraser says, is it the wind chimes? Let's have a look. Yes, it is. Show me what you do with them. And then I give the wind chimes to Fraser so he can have a little play. And I'll probably do the tune again. La, 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 la. La 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 So I'm going to do two more and this time I'm going to have a tambourine so again I play it and I show it so this is the new flow tambourine and a rainmaker. 
So that sounds like that. Play later. I'm not going to play the guitar this time. Listen carefully to this sound. Tell me, Flo, what's that sound? Now this is a bit hard. The tambourine and rainmaker can sound quite similar. So Flo says, is it a tambourine? Let's have a look. Oh, no, it's a rainmaker. Show me what you do with it. So Flo didn't get it right, but I didn't say, oh, no, you're wrong. I just casually said, oh, no, it's a rainmaker, but still gave it to her. So again, it's a good opportunity if a child struggles with worrying about failing, actually to show that it's survivable is a really good experience. Maybe get an adult to get it wrong, to demonstrate, oh, it's okay, actually. It's not that bad when you get things wrong. Um, so it's a good way of, you know, working through other issues if you want to. And for the child that's got a really good ear, you can make it harder and harder as you gauge. So you might have some bells and a tambourine, sleigh bells and tambourine, which actually sound quite similar. Or you might have two different bells or chime bars that are different notes and one's high and one's low. And you've got a child who can tell the difference. Make sure you know as the adult, because not all adults can tell the difference. So don't set yourself up for disaster or actually I can't tell and now the child's getting cross because I'm wrong. Um, the other way you can do it is instrument making. So I've got two containers here. One's got rice in it, one's got pasta. And I would show them as I put them in and have a bag of rice and a bag of pasta to show them. And again, you play them both and see if they can tell the difference. Um, which is a nice activity if you're doing instrument making anyway. It's a way to extend it and get them listening to the different sound qualities. So that's just one other idea of how you can extend instrument making activities.